We've used L'Hopital's rule to deal with the indeterminate forms 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity, but there are actually a few other indeterminate forms out there. This is one big one, 0 times infinity. Right? If you took a limit and you ended up with 0 times infinity, um, well, the, the part going to 0 would be trying to make the product small, and the part going to infinity would be trying to make the product big. And you can't really tell which one wins, just if all you know is that it's something going to 0 times something going to infinity. So this is an indeterminate form, because depending on where 0 and infinity come from, this might be 0, it might be infinity, it might be some real number in between, it, the limit might not exist at all. So uh, just like 0 over 0 means try harder, 0 times infinity also means try harder. Here's an example where that happens. So the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of x times natural log x. So if you just try to, say, plug in 0 or take the limit of each piece separately, as x goes to 0 from the right, this x goes to 0. And as x goes to 0 from the right, natural log x goes to minus infinity. So this is a 0 times infinity kind of indeterminate form. We can't tell if x is getting to 0 faster than natural log is getting to minus infinity. So we don't, we don't know what the value of this particular 0 times infinity is. Now it's tempting to say, well, let's use L'Hopital's rule. But remember, L'Hopital's rule only applies to these two indeterminate forms, infinity over infinity and 0 over 0. And the infinity times 0 is not one of these two indeterminate forms. To use L'Hopital's rule, we really do need one of these two indeterminate forms. So what can we do? Well, if you have 0 times infinity, either plus or minus infinity, it's always possible to do some uh, slight rearrangement of your product to make the 0 times infinity indeterminate form into 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Actually, either one, depending on which one you think is more convenient. See, what we can do is rewrite this algebraically. So now I'm not doing L'Hopital's rule. I'm just rewriting this algebraically. Uh, we can leave that x in the numerator. And instead of multiplying by natural log x, we can divide by 1 over natural log x. Or another thing that we could try, another option we have, is uh, limit as x goes to 0 from the right. We could leave the natural log where it is. And instead of multiplying by x, we could divide by 1 over x. You can see algebraically, these three things are all the same. Um, but these produce different indeterminate forms. So the original one gave us a 0 times infinity indeterminate form. Uh, the limit on the lower left here, as x goes to 0, this gives us a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. And it's 0 over 0 because, remember, this natural log way down here is going to minus infinity. So we have 1 over minus infinity. That's headed towards 0. So the, one, the limit in the lower left is giving us 0 over 0. And then in the lower right, uh, natural log x is going to minus infinity. And as x goes to 0 from the right, 1 over x goes to plus infinity. So this is giving us an infinity over infinity kind of indeterminate form. So we could use L'Hopital's rule on either one of these two limits. So which one should we use? Well, whichever one we think will be easier. I think it's going to be a little easier to use the one on the right, because if we if we use the one on the left, we're going to have to take the derivative of 1 over natural log x. And it's not impossible to do that, but it's definitely easier just to take the derivative of these pieces. So um, before we actually use L'Hopital's rule, I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit more. So natural log x over x to the minus first. Now let's use L'Hopital's rule. Uh, doing this doesn't change the indeterminate form we get. It's still infinity over infinity. Uh, so now let's do L'Hopital's rule. So we're still taking a limit as x goes to 0 from the right. The derivative of natural log x is 1 over x. And the derivative of x to the minus first is minus x to the minus second. So now we can simplify this. One mistake that some people make is, as soon as they use L'Hopital's rule, they immediately try to plug in their x value again. And this is going to give you infinity over infinity still. 
but we can simplify this, right? We, we really should simplify this before, before trying to uh, evaluate it. And if we simplify this, what we get is, so you have to mess around with the exponents a little bit, but you get minus x, right? These two factors of x are in the denominator of the denominator, so they're actually in the numerator, and then you cancel a factor of x, and you're left with a factor of x in the numerator, along with this minus sign. Um, and you can see that this limit, well, there's no need to use L'Hopital's rule. In fact, you can't use L'Hopital's rule for this limit. Um, but there's no need to, because the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of minus x is, is 0. All right, so we can deal with this 0 times infinity uh, indeterminate form by rewriting it in one of these two ways to get an indeterminate form that we can use L'Hopital's rule on. For another example, let's look at this one. Limit as x goes to infinity of x times e to the minus x squared. So this is... Right, x is going to infinity, and e to the minus x squared, well, this is e going to a uh, large negative power, and that gets very small. So in the limit, this e to the minus x squared is going to 0. So we have a 0 times infinity in determinate form. So we need to rewrite this. So limit as x goes to infinity. There are a couple ways to do it, but maybe the easiest way is Right, this exponent is negative, so why don't we actually just move that part to the denominator, like this. Now when we take the limit of the numerator and denominator separately, we get infinity over infinity. And this is one of the indeterminate forms that we can use L'Hopital's rule with. So let's use L'Hopital's rule. We get the limit as x goes to infinity of, let's see, derivative of x is 1 and derivative of e to the x squared is e to the x squared. And then, careful, we have to use uh, the chain rule, so times 2x. And now when we take the limit directly, this denominator is going to uh, infinity, so we get 1 over infinity, sort of, right? The denominator is getting huge, so this goes to 0. Uh, 